I started pulling the four-wheeler apart, trying to figure out what's stopping it from running, etc. The guy said that he thinks it was jetted wrong because it wouldn't idle properly. Kept chugging away. No battery, obviously. And then the kickstart, he said something about he thought the gear was off or something like that. I think, though, the kickstart was that this pin wasn't lining up inside the hole. You can kind of see where it was rubbing instead of going into the actual hole. So that should fix that. As far as the chugging or the improper jetting, the intake manifold itself is made of plastic so of course it was just riddled with cracks so i jb welded that yesterday it's been setting up all night so now i guess the next step would be to put this cover back on try and make sure that pin aligns correctly so that the kick starter will actually engage the kicker gear run some fuel to it and it should just start if it doesn't start after that obviously i need to pull the carburetor and completely clean it gas nowadays just completely gums up carburetors instantly so if it's been sitting with gas in it for any time at all i can imagine that the carburetor itself is completely gummed shut and then once it's running i can chop it into pieces and make it into a shopping cart okay so i think i have this thing figured out it's a four wire ignition system where the key used to be and from what i've surmised on google is when you turn the key to on these two wires the black and the red get connected and that allows the starter and the ignition system to power on when you turn the key to off these two wires get disconnected and the green and the black and white wire get connected and this grounds the green wire as you can see here coming from the coil so this actually kills the spark shutting the ATV off instead of just disconnecting power to the charging system you have to actually ground the coil to shut the spark down where I messed up before was I connected this one and this one and I wasn't getting spark so I realized that either the coil the plug or or something here was wrong so I googled it some more and I found out that that's the ground kill switch so to start it you just connect these two wires and when you want to shut it off you disconnect these two and touch these two together that'll kill the spark so I've got my little jump pack ready to go I've got JB weld all over the cracks on the intake manifold because it's cheap Chinese plastic and I have cleaned the carburetor I need to reassemble the carburetor itself put it back on use my little jump pack to power the battery from my first Miata then it will start it will have spark it will not have an intake leak and it will not have a clogged carburetor so there's really no reason this thing shouldn't run it's got good oil in it then I can address the gearbox in the back on why it's not going into gear but first and foremost I always 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 want to make sure that the motor itself runs there's no broken pieces in it knocks doesn't smoke badly out the exhaust <sighs> I always make sure the motor is the first priority in any project I do. I used to be the type that I wouldn't buy anything unless it ran, but as I've worked on more and more and more stuff, I can kind of tell, especially if you can roll it, push it in gear, you can feel the compression so you know the rings and the internals are good. You'll hear them crunching or it'll be real easy to push in gear if there's no compression because the rings are bad. That's the number one thing that fails on these Chinese ATVs because nobody warms them up. Metal expands a lot when it's cold to warm and not properly warming them up will destroy the rings so a lot of times it's the rings that are bad but you can tell if they're bad because it'll have no compression or it'll have some compression but once you start it it'll just blow black smoke because oil and gas is getting by the rings should be good to go i'm going to reassemble the carb and then i'm going to put everything together what's up pig and then we should be good to go so i'm going to do that and then we'll see what happens I've been soaking the carb parts in some acetone for a day or two. So this thing should be nice and clean by now. And let me tell you, acetone in any cut, holy shit, you know right away where you have scratches on your hands because it freaking burns. This right here is the jet itself. I don't know if you can see that, probably not, but there are some tiny, tiny, tiny holes in this jet and they have to have a wire ran through them because even soaking them in acetone for a few days, if any of these holes are clogged, it's just not going to run right. So you have to take some wire and actually run through them because gas nowadays will dry and turn into literally clear nail polish. It'll be solid as a rock and you have to poke wire through there to get these clean. 
clean but once you get this clean and everything in the carb is working properly there's really nothing to stop it from working another good thing to do is take the float this thing here from inside the carburetor and fill a bowl or your sink full of water and submerge it maybe even squeeze on these a little bit if you see bubbles coming out of it you know you have a leak in this and since it's just plastic you can take a soldering iron and rub across the hole and kind of smear the hole shut with the soldering iron if they're brass you can obviously solder it with solder like it's supposed to be but this can't have any holes in it it can't leak it can't crack because if it doesn't float it's not a float and it won't cut the fuel off when it's filled and then the fuel will overflow into the carb into the engine burn the motor up and run rich so always test this make sure it floats make sure there's no holes or cracks in it gas these days with ethanol in it it really rots these things up pretty bad so now i'm gonna try and find some kind of wire probably some speaker wire or something to run through these holes just to make sure the holes themselves aren't clogged up it looks like they're not so i've got the holes cleaned out everything looks good on this i'm gonna put the jet back into the carburetor and these are made of brass so you want to be real gentle with them and there's also a rubber tipped kind of valve stopper that hangs off of this uh, tab on the float like so it's actually what stops the fuel inside the carb you don't want to mess with this tab because wherever it was at it obviously ran before so you don't want to bend that tab because that'll change where the float shuts the fuel off at but this stopper the rubber can go bad so you kind of want to feel if it feels rubbery still you should be good the sides though they have to slide up and down inside of this channel on the carburetor and both of these need to be just immaculately sparkling clean. Otherwise, they're not gonna shut off properly when they're supposed to. So you always wanna check that, make sure that that thing slides nice and smooth. There should be no resistance in there. Feels pretty good. So I'm gonna put it back on the float and drop it down into the channel and then take the float pin and then you just push it right through so it holds the float. And now you can see the float can move up and down like it's supposed to. Then we take the float bowl. This has an O-ring on it, which obviously gets pretty gunky. So you're gonna wanna clean that up real good. Maybe even put some lube on it. Any oil-based lubricant or axle grease will help rejuvenate this seal instead of buying a new one, because who wants to pay for new stuff? Definitely be careful with it, because it will just pop right out like that. Clean this channel out so we get a good seal. Give you some idea of how gunked up this carburetor was under the rubber seals this filthy just rubbing some axle grease on this o-ring helps it kind of rejuvenate the rubber and break free any of the dirt that's just embedded into it it'll also help it make a proper seal once we put it back together we got our o-ring back in the float bowl and on the other side we have this diaphragm that picks up on the vacuum coming through the carburetor and as air comes across it this will actually lift up and down allowing more fuel or less fuel to go through the needle we were just cleaning with the wire this diaphragm needs to be free of holes otherwise it'll let air go through i've repaired these before with some black silicone rtv very small amount like almost a paper thin layer of it and you can patch holes in it otherwise it won't bend freely you want to make sure that there's no burrs or dirt on this needle because it's got to move freely just like the float does and you want to make sure the holes in the bottom down here are nice and clean with no crap in them otherwise they will not breathe properly same thing with the bottom, make sure the channel that it fits in is nice and clean and has a good seal. I'm going to put a little more of this axle grease around the edge here to help it seal up properly and kind of rejuvenate the rubber. Drop it in slowly, making sure that the needle jet goes into the proper hole. Make sure our valve diaphragm goes into its proper area and there's a big spring because again the air is going to lift that thing up and you want something to push it back shut. If you forget this spring, it's instantly going to idle all the way up and then it's not going to want to idle back down just gonna high rev and we put the cap back on and that should do it these screws are notorious about stripping out but since they're so easily placed you can usually either hit the end of the screwdriver with a hammer or something very gently just a couple wraps to vibrate the threads loose break up any rust before you start torquing on them otherwise if you start torquing on them and they start to strip stop immediately and use either pliers or vice grips and grab the edge of the screw and just break it loose enough to get it freed up 
And last but not least, it looks like on the side here we have a warm-up circuit, kind of like a choke. I'm going to make sure we get this back together properly. Kind of filthy. There's also a little O-ring that goes in there, so we're going to put a little grease on it. Again, just to rejuvenate the rubber and the grease helps any of the stuck on dirt break free. We'll drop that down in the hole, put our bracket back together, and then again, make sure the piston goes straight down into the hole. Oh, you bastard. So it looks like I put the cap on backwards. We're gonna flip this cap around because there's a recessed spot on it to make room for this diaphragm. And that's how you learn by making mistakes. And the only way you can make a mistake is by trying. When I was a kid and people would say one in one hand and shit in the other that they were just being an asshole. But if you think about it, wanting is just thinking about something, whining or whatever you want to call it. But shitting is actually doing something about it. So it's want in one hand and shit in the other hand and see which one fills up first. Because that's telling you that wanting gets nothing accomplished. Shitting, though, is doing something. You're actually taking action. And that hand's gonna fill up first because wanting does nothing. So to everybody out there that's thinking about trying something or building something or taking something apart to see how it works, just do it. I mean, that's the only way you're ever gonna learn anything. Asking your friends and asking Google and watching a YouTube video about it is only gonna get you so far. You have to actually try it, give it a shot, see what happens. And by doing that, you figure out what to do and what not to do, and then you can teach other people. But you'll never, ever, ever learn anything by guessing or thinking about it. You know, we're not all Stephen Hawking. We can't just sit around and think about things and figure them out magically. We have to actually do stuff to figure it out. Now with the carb fully assembled and cleaned, everything should work. I mean, there's really nothing stopping it now.